to do that. If you go to the front door, you don't have to do that. We are going to fix these two doors and we're going to add some more doors. Commissioner McMillan again said, hey, you know, our security stance is not where I want it to be. Uh, um, and we were tasked to take a look at it. We came up with a overall plan and it was extreme in its cost. So we worked and came up with a plan that says, okay, how can we get people to do their business with the minimal amount of interference and securing our building? So the ones you see in the green are gonna be new doors. They will have the readers. You'll be able to go in and out from them. Right. I'm kind of anal about security. I hate doors being left open. I convinced the commissioner to allow us to put sirens on them. All right. If the doors get left open, if the doors get propped open, they're gonna scream at you. All right. And if you're close by, you will hear them. Um, we just got the uh, bids back on those. We have some questions we are sending with the lowest bidder. We figure this will be in place probably mid to late July. And that's about all I have to say. Anybody got any questions? No? Thank you. <laughs> the uh, propping the door also, uh, because they'll have a hard reader's on it, there won't be a need to do that oh, anymore. Squirrel. I'm sorry. Squirrel is IT for Cybar. Um, when Jason was talking, he was talking about the 50 gigs, and I asked about our 25 gigs, and we're getting 25 again. But Dottie asked me, what do we have now? And I said, well, most of us have the 250. Meg. Meg. That's one quarter of a gig. Yeah. So your mailbox is going to go up by 100 fold. Right. Put it in for second. That doesn't include the archive. Does yeah, it? archive basically Microsoft's position. Jason, correct me if I'm wrong. Their position is it's an unlimited mailbox. Now Microsoft's unlimited doesn't necessarily equal our unlimited sometimes, but because it will go into the archive, which is still accessible through web access and through your Outlook and through everything, it's basically an unlimited size. Your inbox, which may be one second quicker to access than your archive, uh, will be limited to the 25 gig or 50 gig as it goes forward. Uh, even the one drive for business, I think it's a terabyte. There's even scuttlebutt about that becoming unlimited, isn't it, or something like that? Yeah, they, 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 they had it limited at one point. The last one we had was, was a terabyte, but because, right, depending on people's agreements with Microsoft, some are a terabyte, some are limited, um, but terabytes, it's still Insane. Hard. I mean, it's, it's 1,024 if you want to get technical. It's 1,024 gigabytes. So your mailbox now is a 250 megabyte, which is a quarter of a gig, and there's 1,024 of those inside, which you, each individual person will have in their own personal OneDrive. Um, I have a question about the logging into the web access. Yes, sir. How do you, you're logging in, is the device going to be available on other devices? Like yes. A friend's computer or something? Uh -huh. like that? I actually asked Microsoft in a meeting. I said, so that means I can take it home and install it on my, uh, my daughter's mm -hmm. PC and she can take it to school. Yep. Okay, how do you log into your stuff? It's going to be using your email login. And that's going to be only to, right, there's two things. When you install it on that daughter's PC, go to college kind of thing, what's going to happen is you would go, you would log in one time into your portal. And I'll demonstrate that here in a minute. That's a little scary, but I'll show you because I want to make sure it works. We have to practice that. But when you log into it, it's going to have a, a button right there that says install. So when you go to that daughter's PC, you're going to go open up a web browser. You're going to go out to a site. It's portal.office.com. Pretty easy to remember. You're going to go in that. You're going to log in with your email credentials, which will be your email address and your password that you get in your normal email now with ISD, but it'll stay the same. Then it'll come up and say, welcome, Lane, in my case. How you doing? And all this other. And it'll show me how many copies I've got currently installed. And then if I'm on my daughter's laptop sitting there, even if it's a Macintosh, you can sit there and it'll have a button to install and you'll hit install and it'll start installing on that computer and it'll actually install it on its C drive, on its local computer. It's not not dependent upon the, the web. As soon as it's done or whatever, you can disconnect from that and as soon as you start up Word or Excel or whatever, the first time, it's gonna ask you to activate the product. In the old days, you remember you would put in a key that came stamped on the CD or something like that. 
forget the key. It doesn't do it anymore. Now what's going to happen is you'll log in with those email credentials that first time. It'll magically go out and validate your copy and say you're good to go. And that way, if you take that computer and it's not connected to the Internet for two months, it won't matter. It'll still run off of that C drive. Now, eventually, it's going to want to kind of go out there and touch and make sure that that account is still alive. So if you retired from the state or did something, that copy won't, you know, stay working forever. It'll eventually deactivate, you know, because that account is no longer active in the state. But uh, that's kind of in a nutshell how it works. And like I said, it's probably easier for me to show it to you. But I'll, I'll try to do that here in a minute. Um, okay, next, let's, uh, let's have Ben. You want to come up and talk about some a couple of things you've got going? Some of the procedure we're having to work through. When I got here, it's, it's funny you mentioned that. It's an honest and it's a very good question. That was my question. It's kind of like you get an active shooter. Let's just go ahead and say what we're worried about. You get an active shooter, it comes in through the seed lab. Someone sees that, obviously. Who do I call? How do I get this notification out? And it was like, well, the investigators that were here before they kind of left were kind of the de facto people that were here. They were, they were the men with badges and guns. You know, that, that's who you're going to go with. We don't really have it. What's the procedure? So some of that we're going to have to work through internally. We really just wanted to get some of the technology in place from our standpoint so that once we do have that worked out, we will have the ability to do it. So I guess that's kind of a just wait to see. Yeah, just, just go. We are putting that panic button, though, in this one in this area up front. So, she, so when someone comes in and they're you know, a little suspect, she can, she can hit the button and it will go off. Uh, but as far as like a... a someone to see something suspicious in a hallway, what's the procedure? We're going to have to work through that. I, I think we should call Patrick the first one, but that's a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, the final decision has been made, but there's also some chance the city's going to put a police substation down to the uh, right. law enforcement. And we've talked, we've talked about that, you know, because ultimately you want law enforcement involved. You know, we don't need to be going out there and trying to chase them down with sticks and whatever. <laughs> So. <laughs>
right. Do you call IP? Who can, who can do yes. this? Yes, call us. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, it, it's to that point. I know what you're saying. Right. So you can kick out the PA message. The only one that could actually put out the PA message right now would be basically us. Right? Um, At this point. Yeah. It, and it is something that we are implementing and, and going for. Right now, you know, prior to that, you had nothing. And you go out and you yell out in the hall, I guess. But we're at least trying to get that in place so we can do it. So, yes, today I'll go ahead and take that burden. Call IT and uh, Chris or whoever else has the ability, we'll, we'll get that out. Um, coordinate with the front office, try to get law enforcement involved, and, and they're pretty fast to respond too. But that, that, that'd be your best, that'd be your best bet right now. All right, Ben. I'll be quick. Um, two things I wanted to talk about, website content management, GIS. Uh, first off, to all the web, uh, content managers out there that got the training and everything, you need to speak louder. All right. Um, Y'all are doing a great job on the website. It looks great. I appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Uh, if there's anybody that wants to make their page better that doesn't remember the training we had like a year and a half ago, uh, yeah, just come see me. Send me an email. We'll, we'll work on your page. Any training, I'm going to put it on our website uh, to where you can go get some refresher videos or, like I said, just send me an email and we can go over it. Um, some areas on the website that we can do better, uh, promoting events. We have a, on the home, home page there, we have a whole section of events. If you have meetings coming up, uh, public things, anything like that, uh, we can put them on, I can show you how to put them on the home page. Uh, they just put the date, the title, contact information. It's really simple, <coughs> just like updating your page. Uh, we can also do online form development. Um, if you have paper forms, things people are, are, are are mailing in right now that you would uh, want somebody to just go on our website, fill it out, hit submit, you have their information, it sends you an email, we can do that. We have different, uh, three different form development uh, softwares that we can use to do that, so that's just keep that in mind with your business process. If there's something you want to streamline, we can do that with the website or some of the other software we have. Uh, then the other thing I want to talk about real quick was just GIS. Uh, it's more than just putting points on a map. If y'all have that data that you want to analyze spatially, using attributes, whatever, GIS can do it. We can throw it up on a map. Uh, we're about to go up to be a part of ArcGIS Online to where I'm not the only one that can see the data. We, you can log in, see your information up on, just logging in, just like this Office 365 stuff. You can log in, see it online. Um, anybody, you, anybody else you want to be able to see it online, they can log in. Uh, you can see all, all your, your inspectors work, whatever information you put into it, it makes it better. So um, we also work with other state agencies, so there's information that they have that we can incorporate to make better decisions. You know, we work with uh, two of my biggest users are, of GIS within the department are poultry and, well, animal health as a, as a whole and plant protection. So um, they use me to show where traps are, to show where chicken houses are, to show the 25 mile or 25 kilometer radius, stuff like that. Um, just whatever they need, we can do it with GIS. We can throw other layers up, th up there as far as weather, um, wind patterns, just you name it, it can do it. So, and we incorporate other uh, state agencies information using virtual Alabama, we can throw it up there. They can see our information if we want them to or not and they can share what they want with us. So uh, a lot of collaboration that can happen if we have a disease outbreak or some food safety issue, you know, GIS can help with that as a decision making tool. Um, aerial imagery, just another function of it. Google Maps, we can work with that. In any of the, the tools that you're used to using to figure out how to get from here to the beach, we can use those too. So um, that's about all I had. I was just being real quick about it, but any questions about any of that? All right. GIS, when I was at ISD, one of the functions that I had underneath me was our GIS group. And I, other than being able to spell GIS, that was about all the information I have. And, and they do speak a different language. If you think IT speaks a different language, talk to somebody in GIS. And they start talking about road center lines and, and all sorts of crazy things. But, it's pretty amazing. I remember when the BP oil spill happened, um, GIS really came into its own a little bit with the state. They were 
uh, putting GI, GIS locators on booms, the, the things that suck up the oil in the, in the bay, and they were tracking them as they went through and working with the federal government, working with BP, and, and it was really an interesting um, enlightening me. So there's a lot of things that you can do with GIS that, that you might want to think about any of your outlying areas and, and inspection points and, and poultry information. It, it's really interesting, but talk with Ben. If you had any thoughts that you might could use something, um, Ben, have I skipped anything? Um, okay, that's pretty much it. I do want, there's a couple of things that I've got going on that may or may not be real. Um, where's the link to? Securing the human? Yeah, it's a it's on that, it was on that last slide. Right? Last slide. Thanks. It's just at the top. I, the yeah. snake that I didn't see was sitting in my booth. Um, there's three things that we're working on real quick with us. This is the last, this last thing, so yeah, you can applaud that. The um, document management is something when I came in, I, I know the commissioner has seen that. I know some others have. That was in that AUM study. Um, right now, we have a lot of scanners sitting on desks. We go to individual databases, individual things. And while it works to some degree and some people are happy with it, it really doesn't give you any type of collaboration, ability to search across all the documents, no central point. And if you were to ask me where all the data is, I'd say, yeah, I don't know on a bunch of desktops. So there's something we're going to be looking at in the next six months, year. Um, it's a company uh, called Laserfish. Uh, it's on the state contract. They work along with SharePoint, SharePoint Online. I know that, um, um, Jason's company works a lot with them and stuff doing this thing, but it's an enterprise document management system that we may be looking at. So we would be collapsing all the different databases that you still use your scanner, still use your processes, but it would enhance what we can be able to provide online. And then it integrates into that foundation we're creating, the SharePoint to be able to share it, to be able to collaborate with it, to be able to search it, to be able to do those types of things. And that's why we're doing what we're doing. But that's something we're, we're looking at and we're working at down the, down the future. Um, there's also a thing, there's a Dell system called Dell Case. I don't even know what it stands for. It stands for something, I'm sure they bought it for somebody, but it's basically a systems management deployment 